We are back, and Michael Hayden, does the effectiveness of drones outweigh the moral concerns about them? Good question. I meant to get that. It's a great, it's a great yeah. question. And there's always a trade-off. And even if the first order effect is what you want and you achieve it, you always create second, third, and fourth order effects that you're going to have to pay a tariff on sooner or later. So you don't do it lightly. The line I use with regard to drones in our current circumstances, we don't need a switch. We need a dial. Meaning? When meaning that there's still times when such an activity is necessary, when we've got an adversary, wants to come in over the perimeter wire and kill you, me, our families. When you have a host government unwilling yeah. and or unable to act, you need to keep this tool available. But, but again, it, it can't always be the default option because you have to live then with second and third now, order I, effects. I read light. your article about it. You said it's greatly exaggerated how many civilians it, it, are killed. It, it, it is. But, but the article also says it's necessary, precise, and imperfect. Mm. And so yeah. you always have to live with those. But problems. again, the alternative, uh, you know, if you look at us in Iraq 10 years ago, kicking down doors, actual soldiers on the ground, getting killed and killing a lot of other Iraqis, I don't know if that's better. But I also think drones probably do create a lot of terrorists. No, it, as I said, trade-offs. Let me give you a thought. You know, it, it's uh, kind of viewed as antiseptic. It's a video game. It's not really warfare I mean, from, the, from our side. Uh, the people who operate them, and tremendous emotional strain because they actually become intimately familiar with the target, with the pred, the, the reaper over a target, hours if not days. You see the family, you see the interaction, you, you see this as a human being. And, and if that's still the target, you know, he kisses the kids, he kisses the wife, he gets in the SUV and he gets 400 yards away from the compound where you can now take your first shot consistent with the laws of armed conflict. And you do, even though you've established this great emotional bond. So it's not a free ride for the, for the people tactically. It is, however, very alluring at the political level because it allows you to do and be seen as doing something without embracing right. the political risk of putting Americans in harm's way. Hmm. Uh, Fran Labrowitz, what explains your antipathy toward the Clintons? Yeah, you don't like the Clintons. No, am I alone in this? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I mean, I think everybody else has mixed, no, I mean, uh, mixed feelings. Yes, mine aren't that mixed, but... Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, I believe that you can only really judge your contemporaries. You know, people younger and older than you, you were kind of guessing, but with your contemporaries, you can really read them. And mm. Bill Clinton was the first uh, person of my generation, he's older, but still my generation, uh, to be the president, to run for the president. And the second I saw him, I thought, I know this guy, I went to high school with him. You know, I didn't like him then, I don't like him now. So I think my antipathy <laughs> is that I understand him. You know, um, I don't like him. I, I, to me, he seemed like a Republican. You know, I didn't like his policies. When he signed that welfare bill, I went insane. You know, I mean, he was way to the right of me. A lot of his success was about moving the Democratic Party yes, to the right. He was a successful, moderate Republican president. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a liberal Democrat, so that is why I didn't right. like him. Mm -hmm. um, Hillary Clinton, the same, really, you know. Um, Chelsea Clinton is just a throw in to the mix. <laughs> you know, it's not her fault, but... Right. But she's not helping. Yes, she's not helping right. the situation. But I'm voting for Hillary Clinton, and I want her to be the president. All right. Because it doesn't matter if you like them. You're not going to have dinner with them. Michael Eric Dyson, how would you grade Obama as a, quote, black president? Not even sure. As opposed to the... I am not sure what the that The other means. Obama, you know, the, the Jewish... The other, the... <laughs> <laughs> OEV. Um, look. I think he's going to go down as one of the most incredibly successful and consequential presidents in the history of this nation. But what, what he is, what, but what he has done on race will not win him those plaudits. He is the Shaquille O'Neal of presidents. He, he's got four rings. He's an incredibly great president, but he couldn't shoot free throws. It does no good for us to pretend that Shaquille O'Neal could shoot free throws. And in fact, because of that vulnerability, they came up with a hack -a shack And they exploited him at the end of the game. Obama's weakness, his hack -a shack is race because he was hesitant, he procrastinated, and he was loath to address an issue that ultimately forced him into his bully pulpit with extraordinary eloquence. And the last time I was on the show, when he spoke that eulogy at that church, he was at his best when he was at his blackest, and therefore he showed America something more powerful. So as a president in general, an A, as a president who dealt with issues that are germane to African-American people, about a C. But you, you choose, as your analogy, the NBA, the right. most black-dominated sport. Yes. Racist, sir! <laughs> Jack 
cues. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start fighting racism there, where, it's, where it is most prevalent. <laughs> you're, Mark you're Ruffalo, right. did you lo did your lobbying of British Prime Minister David Cameron have an effect on his fracking agenda? Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, I didn't know you lobbied him. I did. I, uh, I made a video imploring him to think about the health consequences. And he answered you? Uh, no, but... Uh, <laughs> that was before four, you're an A-list. Four million you're an people. You're an A-list now. Now you'll get the... Now the yeah, yeah, now, t after tonight, <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for... I'm waiting. <laughs> four million people saw that. It was probably one of the most uh, popular posts that I've ever, I've ever wow, made. that is a lot. And, uh, I mean, what he's doing there is he's basically, he told the people, if you don't want fracking, we won't bring it here. And uh, recently he just turned that around. The people said, we don't want fracking. And he said, well, we're going to force you to take it. Mm. And uh, it's just, yeah. you know, it's the England. same shit everywhere. I, I always... Who wants fracking? <laughs> I, Lots of people. I mean, other than the people and in the it, business. Right. Like, is, are there other people that are not in the I don't business? know. Like, who wants who's fracking? like, come well, in, I'll frack my backyard. Right. Well, they, they, they come in, they offer you money for your yeah. farm. And then they turn the water on and it bursts right. into flames. They see exactly. that. I've seen it. I know. Mm. They, it's, they think it's, that's a good trade-off? I know. No. Some people. But people don't think ahead, you know, and some people are struggling. And it's like somebody comes in and offers yeah. you money for your farm, and a, your farm is yeah. failing anyway. And, you that's know, true. of course, you're going to That's what it was. Mm. Will Obama be able to finally close Guantanamo Bay? Yes, that was news this week. We should have mentioned it. Didn't have time for that. What do you think about that, Guantanamo Bay? If it closes, I hope he's able to do it without creating a constitutional crisis by closing it in the face of congressional opposition that we actually get to a, a political agreement. Uh, I'm not concerned about keeping prisoners in the United States. Uh, as you've talked earlier, you we're, we're really good at that. Right. Okay, we can yeah. done it very well. Well. <clears throat> keep people right. here. I am concerned. I am concerned about about the legal regime that would be created by what the president still agrees will be forever prisoners. There are some who will be brought here who will not be tried and whom we will not release. Oof. And then, and then the, other, the other factor is, uh, back to your MBA metaphor, uh -oh. don't, don't operate under a shot yeah. clock here. Right. All right? Um, you need to be very careful about who you shove out the door. The recidivism rate here is about 30%. Mm. Truth in lending, Bush administration pushed more people out the door than this administration. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so, so we both had a common goal. In the door. Well, we did. We like, actually... Most of the people who were there never should have been there in the first place. And, right. and we've right. kept people right. there who even our own government says we should release. That's They're true. just rotting Why there don't for we no give reason. them a trial? I still don't understand. Like, Especially American since trial system And works. trials work. We have never, ever had a, tr uh, a high profile terrorist trial in a federal court where there wasn't a conviction. They're pitching a perfect game. You're like, you're like, that's, that's terrorist bait. I mean, it's literally a terrorist manual. America doesn't try people. They say they right. do, but they don't. Right. Why? Well, Why? It produces My turn? America. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Yeah. Because this president and his predecessor in the American Congress have said we are at war with Al-Qaeda. That gives us a variety of legal regimes, not a lawful regime and an unlawful regime, but a variety of legal regimes with which to conduct the war. One is, according to United States criminal law, another perfectly legal <clears throat> effort is to do it under the laws of armed conflict. A president who is willing to kill people outside of internationally agreed theaters of conflict has already hugged dearly mm. the concept that we are at war. And therefore, we do have a right as a belligerent to keep members of the opposing armed enemy force as prisoners. But we don't have to. No, and, and, and no, we could try the, in the federal courthouse in New York. You know why right. Bloomberg didn't want that trial there? Bad for real estate values. That is absolutely why Bloomberg. Is that really? Yes. That but is there have why. been many trials there. Yes, there have been many trials. There. And they're all successful. Yes. Okay. But it reduces America's moral authority all around the world. And you can see America trying to lecture countries yeah. on democracy and the importance of it. And then this is what we do. It's just such the a The optics goal. suck. Yeah. They, 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 they just, really the do. optics are not good. Although, given no. the inclination toward mass incarceration, one of the embarrassing consequences, though unintended, could be that, hey, a terrorist got a fairer trial than some of our American citizens. You know, there's a reason hmm. why ISIS executes people in those orange like that. <laughs> like, well, that color. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just thinking. Oh, my God. That would be bad. bad. Not, not like that. No, I'm just saying. What you did to it's that exact. Scalia, please. <laughs> it's, oh, it's that exact color. But well. a better cut. This yeah, is a much better, much better cut. cut. Right. Thank you. Can, can I? 
But that, you know, that color jumpsuit, they put them in that outfit because they want to remind people of Gitmo. Right. Yeah. Bill, can I, can I just look forward? We're looking backwards, and I understand the impact, right? But looking forward, if you're unwilling to use all the tools available, look at the dilemma. The book tries to emphasize nothing easy, and there's always trade-offs, all right? Looking forward, we don't capture anyone whom we cannot, we, whom we don't have confidence, this is looking forward, that we don't have confidence we can bring into an Article Three court and we have a chain of evidence and all those other things that are required for a very high standard of beyond reasonable doubt proof. Mm. And when we don't have that tool, when we don't have that body of proof, when we don't think we can bring them in <clears throat> to a federal court instead of capturing under the, under the laws of armed conflict, we kill them. Mm. Right. Mm, so but Guantanamo was filled with people that they just yeah, grabbed. Absolutely. I mean, we hear the story just, over and over yes. again that they were We've grabbed at night. Right. Yeah, they, so were just, they were just they were just part of right, a feud in Afghanistan. Right, right, right. Wrong dude. Sorry. Right. Right. Eighteen years. Right. Right. Sorry. Right. It's just right. it's unconscionable. Wrong guy. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. We I mean, we just need to close Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stop. It's yeah. it's it's just a political issue for politicians. To be able to say, I won't allow them on American soil. I keep That's saying, right. these guys have seen Con Air too many times. Yeah. They think these are master criminals instead yeah. of just sad old men. Right. Okay, Joanna Coles, do you see gun control as a woman's issue? Oh. You see uh, gun control as a woman's issue. Well, the boyfriend loophole is very worrying, where, what? you know, the, the, there is a sort of boyfriend loophole. So actually, single women. Um, are not as well protected as married women and women with children. And that's to do with uh, when... If a man has been violent in a relationship um, and, you, you're, and he's no longer living with the woman and you're dating him, he can still buy a gun. If he's been violent in a relationship and he's still with the woman, he's not allowed to buy a gun with background checks. So actually, single women... Um, are more vulnerable and it's incredibly important actually for single women to a know that they're more likely to be murdered by a guy with a gun than if you're married to him and secondly that um, you should have a conversation with someone if you're dating them about do you have a gun where do you keep it where's the ammunition mm -hmm. and don't have it when you're I mean, both I, drunk. I, I know you know have it when you're so liberals hate and... anything that that you know sort of gives ammunition <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, to the pro-gun people but uh, the truth is that uh, men are generally stronger than women, and, you know, a gun is an equalizer. Well, only if the woman's is. holding the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but a woman can hold a gun. It's not too heavy for her to pick up. <laughs> well, except that if you live in a household with a gun, one of you is more likely to die from gun death or from violent death than if you don't have one. Right. So you're well, better maybe, off... The truth is you're better off not having a gun. Maybe you're better off not bushes. having a gun. You know, if he's in the bushes and I was a woman, I'd like to have a gun. I would. Mm. Because if he gets in the house, then I don't have any recourse. Well, statistics show that you're much less likely to be harmed by a gun if there are no guns around. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's a lot of idiots who don't know what they're doing with a gun. Mm. You know? Uh, does Chris Christie backing Trump lend him any credibility with the Republican establishment? Which one, Trump yeah. or Christie? That's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. I think Chris uh, Christie is trying to get a job. I think of he's course, of Trump's course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 I think he thinks he's going to win, and he thinks finally I'm going to be a pit boss in Atlantic City, right. which is the job he really should have had. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I don't think he thinks he's going to be the vice president because right. that would be a little too much of one sort of testosterone fueled right. East Coast right. 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 kind of alpha male. But Attorney General, I think he would love that job, oh, yeah. and and I think if if he helps Trump, 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 I mean, I'm, I'll be thrilled if Trump is president and he doesn't a appoint Paula Dean and Joe the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> or Judge Judy. Judge or Judge Judy for Supreme the Court. poorly educated love him. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> has the success of Donald Trump diminished the power of money in politics? Well, that's a good question, too, because uh, we saw Jeb Bush drop right. out, yeah. and he certainly had most of the money, and Donald Trump, yeah, he's... But isn't Donald Trump getting money just on the sly. I mean, it's not that he's not getting money. He's just not getting it the traditional way. But, you know, 
there's a lot more than his own cash at stake. But so I don't think he's a, he's an answer to the referendum but, on money. But Jeb spent $98 million yeah. on advertising. And if you're Donald Trump, you're a content machine, right? You don't need to have any advertising because everybody's covering you. That's you true. are the content. And mm -hmm. Jeb was simply wrapping his ads around the content of Trump. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it doesn't, money doesn't help you if you're not a good candidate, and Jeb just didn't look like he wanted it enough. Yeah. I would say it's like a sports team. You know, it, it, over the course of many seasons, probably the richer teams do right. do better. Right. But lots of times, I mean, in the World Series last year, the Mets were not That's one true. of the richer teams, either were the Royals, and the Mets beat them. All right, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>